In this series of videos, you're going to learn about the importance of securing your software and how you can use fuzz testing to locate unknown vulnerabilities before your adversaries do. So we've heard that the world's full of interdependent software and that software itself is a combination of third-party and original code that might contain vulnerabilities, making it easy for an adversary to exploit. What then are the defenses we have against these software vulnerabilities? Static application security testing, also known as static code analysis, is perhaps the most popular tool. SAST uncovers vulnerabilities by analyzing the source code itself. The defects they identify are known unknown risks, meaning that they identify a known class of weaknesses, and if left alone, that coding weakness might result in a vulnerability. So SAS operate in the world of what if, taking in potentially relevant information to make assumptions on what could be. Despite its shortcomings, SAS have their place within the software development lifecycle, and it remains a recommended preventative practice. At the opposite side of the spectrum from static application security testing is dynamic application security testing, or DAS. This is an overarching category for a variety of techniques that look at the active runtime code. To provide more specificity, we'll focus for the moment on Software Composition Analysis, or SCA. This is a software security testing solution that complements SAS by looking for the known known vulnerabilities. When vulnerabilities become known, they are reported to the National Vulnerabilities Database and become Common Vulnerabilities and Exploits, or CVEs. SCAs can detect CVEs within the software they're scanning. SCAs operate in the world of what is, relying on accepted and publicly known information to uncover known vulnerabilities. SCAs offer prescriptive advice, listing the affected component and providing a link to its workaround or patch. This level of actionability is unique to DAS solutions. However, bear in mind, not all the vulnerabilities flagged by an SCA solution are exploitable. Additionally, each patch must also be tested to ensure interoperability with the entirety of the application and or the ecosystem they live in. While SAST and SCA are effective and in wide use today, they're not perfect. Often when discussing SAST and SCA, the quality of analysis is overlooked in favor of their ability to find known weaknesses and known vulnerabilities. Code coverage becomes a critical factor. If you're only looking for something that is known, then you might be missing the larger picture. For example, CVE 2014-0160, aka Heartbleed, was a new class of vulnerability that could not have been discovered using existing SAS and could not have been identified by SCA either. Why? By looking only for the known vulnerabilities and weaknesses, SAS and SCAs failed to discover new bugs by only looking for the unknown knowns and known knowns. This is due to something known as the pesticide paradox. In a 1990 book, Software Testing Techniques, Boris Beiser first coined the term. The pesticide paradox states that if the same software tests are repeated, eventually those test cases will no longer find new bugs. So it's a common misconception that no new bugs can indicate that the software under test is secure. More often than not, no new reported bugs actually indicate that the defects have instead clustered somewhere else in the software. Thus, the value of SAS and SCA tests in terms of continuous testing decreases over time if they're only circling around a small part of the code and never explore the unknown unknown regions. That's why we need to consider a third type of software testing tool. Fuss testing then is a much more agile technique under the dynamic testing category. The defects that fuzzing tools identify are the unknown unknown risks, the zero days, and there are more of those lurking in any code. The defects that fuzzing tools identify are the unknown unknown risks, the zero days. Fuzzing uncovers defects utilizing unknown or uncommon attack patterns. Fuzzing tools operate between the world of what if and what is. They uncover unknown defects, enabling organizations to be both preventative and proactive. What is fuzz testing? 
Consider we have a very simple computer program. At the left, you can see a simple program behavior where an unknown vulnerability lies at the bottom of a chain of conditional statements. At the right, you see are a set of potential inputs. And below that, you can see what's known as a minimum set or min set, the smallest possible set of inputs that covers every behavior. In computer science, we often represent programs as order trees. For the sake of simplicity, traversing the paths of each tree could be seen as traversing the paths of a maze, where some of the inputs result in the correct behavior, some of the inputs go nowhere at all, and some of the inputs result in bad behavior. Inputs can be thought of as directions in a maze, and when the program executes, it begins to follow the directions of the maze. Here we see a successful execution. Here's another successful execution, albeit with a little more work. While the inputs might be different, the net result is the same. Here's an input that leads to bad behavior. We simplified this here in the program, but you can imagine that this could be any undefined or unexpected behavior, i.e. program crashes, misused or corrupt data output, hangs, freezes, etc. And again, here's another input that leads to some bad behavior. The min set is valuable to us because as the program example illustrates, it covers every behavior that the program might exhibit. How can we get there? This is what advanced fuzz testing allows us to achieve. So how do these different software testing solutions align? We can think of one axis as being known versus unknown vulnerabilities. We can add a second axis for static versus dynamic testing. Starting at the left, we have static analysis. In the lower right is software composition analysis. And in the upper right is fuzz testing. Now, if we again think of our code as a simple maze, how do each of these solutions perform their tests? With static analysis, we're looking for unknown examples of something we do know. So let's say it's a 45 degree angle, it's all on its own. Static analysis will go through and find all the examples that match. However, not all the examples are correct. Imagine having a much more complex maze, one with a lot more false positives to sift through. With SCA, we can then look for known knowns, our CVEs, and in this case, we know exactly the signature that we're looking for in the code. And here we find that signature within our maze. But look at all the areas of the maze that simply wasn't tested. Finally, we can use fuzz testing to dynamically discover the potential vulnerabilities in our maze. And with guided fuzz testing, we can map out and explore all the different pathways within our code. More importantly, we can map out the good pathways with the end result we want as opposed to the bad pathways with the end result that we do not want. And with fuzz testing, once we have mapped out all the pathways, we can test this continuously as we continue to develop and iterate the code, always performing regression testing to make sure any change introduced doesn't integrate new vulnerabilities, always proving that we have fixed any exposed vulnerabilities in our code. Continuous fuzz testing has been a proven and accepted software practice for years. However, it is also an advanced technique. Until now, fuzzing has been exclusive to technology behemoths such as Google, Microsoft, Apple, Nvidia, and more, who have the technical savvy and budget to implement and maintain such advanced technologies. Latest advancements in this field of study have dramatically improved usability and automation, making fuzz testing increasingly accessible to the general public. Now that you have some idea of the importance of security and software today, and you are aware of some of the tools that allow you to do your own testing on whatever piece of software or device you want, with fuzz testing you should be able to find zero-day vulnerabilities that are lurking inside your software and therefore defend it against adversaries. In the next video, we'll talk more in depth about fuzz testing.